And do you think that, I mean, the, the, give us the, the, some advice for the media, because, you know, again, the media did mainstream the Tea Party and wants to, doesn't want to be in a war with the Republican Party. Let's just be clear. In general, the media does not want to be at war with the Republicans. They want to treat both sides the same. But both sides are not the same. <laughs> Oh, what was that? And how did I get back here? Anyway, here we have yet another one of those obvious Democrat media segments where they try to convince the viewer that they're not exactly what they appear to be. Hate-filled partisan operatives for the Democrat party. No, they want you to believe that they just look that way because their political opposition are horrible inhuman monsters who should never have power. While their side is utopian and above criticism. According to these trustworthy stewards of democracy, the only way to save it is to give their party total unending control. While their political opponents are treated as an outlaw domestic enemy. Sounds so democracy-ish. <laughs> and why wouldn't you trust this massive forehead? It's not as if she blatantly lies within the first few seconds of this clip. And do you think that, I mean, the, the, give us the, the, some advice for the media because, you know, again, the media did mainstream the Tea Party. Man, this is some bullshit. In reality, the Tea Party was mostly comprised of families who cleaned up after their protests but yet were endlessly demonized from the very first time they dared to protest Barack Obama. It got so bad that on multiple occasions, the media falsely attributed mass shootings to members of the Tea Party. MSNBC and the rest of the Democrat media went out of their way to demonize these people as racist, much like you see today with any kind of protest that stands in the way of their agenda. It's like I always say, they think the only legitimate protest is one that advances their agenda. Take a look at this uh, email that Congressman Alan Grayson, a Democrat of Florida, sent to supporters yesterday comparing the Tea Party to the KKK. Now, this has happened before in history. In Germany in the 20s and 30s, there was this right-wing reactionary element that was so terrified of anarchy and communism that they said, you know what, there's a group of street thugs that are real ideologues and they're willing to take it. And what they didn't realize... Is that a realize, stretch? Nazis versus the Tea Party who just want smaller government? What is true is that ideologues are well. only loyal to ideology. What? I know the Tea Party hates hearing that, that, you know, they're racist because 99.999% of them are white and the president who drives them insane is black. It's just a coincidence. Not only do they not have any solutions, there is no solution that will satisfy the Tea Party people except going back to the 60s. And I'm talking about the 1860s, not the 1960s. These people are crazy. There's 8 to 15 to perhaps 20 members of the Tea Party influenced wing of the Republican Party in the House who are crazy. They are crazy. Yeah, these are people that don't believe in evolution of global warming, so why are they going to believe that default would hurt anything? I mean, you're not dealing with, like, rational people here. I mean, like, come on. They've strapped uh, explosives to the Capitol, and they think they are immune from it. These Tea Party guys are, like, strapped with dynamite, standing in the middle of Times Square at rush hour, and saying, either you do it my way, or we're going to blow you up, ourselves up, and the whole country up with us. Uh, let's see, drop the taxes. Drop socialism. Okay, let's see, you're here with your two-year-old and you're already in debt. Sir, what does this have to do with taxes? What does this have to do with your taxes? Do you realize that you're eligible for a $400 credit? Finish my point. Okay, well, Kira, we'll move on over here. I think you get the general tenor of this. Uh, it's anti-government, anti-CNN, since this is highly promoted by the right-wing conservative network, Fox. And since I can't really hear much more, and I think uh, this is not really family viewing, toss it back to you, Kira. Because, you know, again, the media did mainstream the Tea Party and wants to, doesn't want to be in a war with the Republican Party. Let's just be clear. So, no, not only did the media not mainstream the Tea Party, they turned them into domestic terrorists. One thing I thought that the media should do a better job of, which is how do people in the media conduct themselves in an autocratic country, the ones that believe yeah. in free media. We need to think more like that in the media and less like this is just A and B and decide. Let the voters decide. That's the point yeah. we have to give up. They keep saying that word, autocratic, to describe their out of power political opponents who are a minority in the media landscape and in America's institutions. Here's the definition of autocratic, relating to a ruler who has absolute power, taking no account of other people's wishes or opinions, domineering. First, in what way does this describe the Republican party? 
Nobody thinks Trump is a guy with absolute power. We already saw that the last four years. We already saw what happened when Donald Trump's in power. The media and US institutions broke laws, incited riots, and spread actual Russian disinformation in an attempt to undo those election results and torpedo his administration. It should be obvious, logically, that an authoritarian needs institutional support, which Republicans just don't have. They don't have the media. They don't have the education system, Hollywood, or corporate support that Democrats enjoy. Don't take my word for it. This guy lived through it. In your book, you're describing the directives of Mao Zedong during the Cultural Revolution that would be distributed publicly every night. And then you write, this is your quote, they served a function similar to Donald Trump's late night tweet. So do you see Donald Trump as an authoritarian? I, well, I don't, you know, he, if you are authoritarian, you have to have a system in supporting you. You cannot just be authoritarian by yourself. But certainly in the United States, with today's uh, condition, you can easily have an authoritarian. In many ways, you're already in the authoritarian state. You just don't know it. How so? Many things happen today in the US. It's can be compared to cultural revolution in China. Like what? Like people trying to be unified in certain political correctness. So it's simply impossible for a guy like Trump to be an authoritarian in this environment. But let's think of who does. Democrats have all the institutional support. Currently, they have all the power. They have the vast majority of control in the media. They're attacking the First and Second Amendments, the underpinnings to freedom in this country, and the first targets of any authoritarian. All right, folks, that's all I have for that. Make sure to join me on Twitter, hit that like button, and leave a comment to help the algorithm. <laughs>